the same basic way. Hi, people at home. Um, so they're all going to work the same basic way. When we want to do either a destructor or a copy constructor or operator equals, uh, or sorry, destructor, copy constructor, or update priorities, they're all going to operate the same basic structure. And that overall structure is basically like project one. Make a container, put the start into the container. While that container is not empty, take something out, add things nearby, and do something with the current one. So if we're talking like destructor, I would add some. I would add the start to the container while it's not empty. I take one out, add things nearby. Well, what am I going to have a container of? Yeah. Oh, node pointers. Node pointers. So I can have like a deck, deck, deck of node pointers, DQ, whoops, DQ. So I've got a deck of node pointers. What is the start? It's the root. So I put the root in there, as long as it's not empty. I take one out, I add the things nearby. If I've got a pointer, what is nearby a pointer? Either the child or the sibling. Or both, really. Or they're both nearby yeah. if they exist. Yeah. If there are no pointers, don't add them. I don't want no pointers in my deck. That just makes it crowded. So if I've got a child, put the child pointer in the deck. If I've got a sibling, put the sibling pointer in the deck. And then do something with the current node. Well, do something in a destructor is just delete it. Yep. And if I'm copy constructing, this deck is going to contain nodes of the other object that I'm trying to create. Right? So I've got like when I'm doing a copy constructor, I've got this other. Other has a root, points to like 81, 18, uh, 42, 7, 18 has children, like 12, 3, 42 has children, 28, and 5, etc. So that's the other thing. So when I put the other root in here, and then I loop until that deck is empty. I take a pointer out, I add the things nearby, like a pointer to 18 goes into the deck, and then what do I do with my pointer to 81? Oh. If I'm copying, what do I do with my pointer to 81? Oh, we need to make a deep copy. We need to make a deep copy, so but all I have to do is just say push. Push into me a copy of this pointer's element. So that's copy constructor. And so then if we're doing update priorities, it's the same structure. I've got a deck, I put the root, well it's not empty, take one out, add things nearby, do something with it. So if I'm updating priorities, what's happened is, at some point, somebody went and messed with my data. And I don't know how they got it, but they did. They changed my data around, and like this 18 became 118, and this 28 became like 73, and this three became uh, 47. So I don't know what's wrong in this tree. So now, as I go through every one of these nodes, what can I do with it? I've got to, I've got to tear this. I've got to tear this pairing heap apart and make a new one. So as soon as I put, as soon as I've got in my deck, whoops, DQ. As soon as my deck has a pointer to 81 in it, what I can do is, uh oh, that's not the root anymore. My root is a null pointer. Now, as I encounter a node over here, what do I do with it? I add the left child, right sibling, whatever, I do those. What do I do with this 81? You set it equal to the root, or the root to point to it? Not quite, because later on I'm going to get a 118. I can't just set the root equal to 118 or a 42. I meld it. I take this pointer to 81, so then I take the deck. I take, so right now I've got current, current is a pointer to 81. Then I take that 81 out of the deck. I add the pointer to 118. I add my child and sibling. Then I take this 81 and break it. I've got no child, I've got no sibling, I've got no parent or previous. This is just a node. 
and then we melt it. We melt it with the roof. Do that for everybody. Take this 118. So when 118 comes out, I get pointer to 118 is in here. The deck is empty. I add to the deck pointer to 12 and pointer to 42. And then I take this 81, a 118, and I detach it. 81's got, 118's got nothing. No siblings, no children, no nothing. And I take this 118 and I meld it with the root. We won't get problems with memory leaks like this. Were Did you ever delete any nodes or no. create any new nodes? No. Did you take everything in here and meld it with the root? If you do your deck right. If you do, the, if you walk through the deck properly, then everything in here will be remelded with the root. I won't lose any nodes. I won't create any new nodes. I don't delete any old nodes. I should be fine, as long as everything makes it from here back into here. And again, like I said. We use this same approach of looping over everything, add the child sibling. We use this for destructor and copy constructor and update priorities. Either they're all going to walk through all nodes or they're all going to fail. It's just a little scary to like completely have the top and the bottom of the tree just detached from each other. Yep, yep. But as long as the deck has the other things, I can pick up at node 12, I can pick up at node 42. Yes. Oh, um, so. So I have a quick question about like, like so say, so like using a deck is that like kind of like equivalent like, because the the while loop in the deck we recursively kind of visit each node on the tree right, with it without using recursion. Without using without recursion, that's the key, using a because loop, so. if I had a really big pairing heap, yeah. I don't know You'd that recursion, recursion would be that. safe. I might have a stack overflow. Okay, so but it's the same like same kind of concept. As, right, it's okay. the same concept, but when. When we yeah. don't know if recursion is going to be safe, yeah. we've got to do something else. I see. Okay. But when you, um, I don't use tail recursion for these, but I have a couple There's no recursion at all? Yeah, no, 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 I don't. I, I think it's just. Oh, <laughs> I, I wrote a recursive one for a moment. Well, I think it helps with the, I, like, the idea. Yeah. What was your question? Oh, I just, I have, like, when I, when I use, when I do, like, the top um, function, and I have to, like, go, like, right to last. Well, that's not too bad because A, it's tail recursive, yeah. and B, the number of children at the root level that you're going to have to loop over is not that big. Yeah. Okay. So if it works, that's fine. I, I that, but that's a, for some reason that doesn't make sense. Yeah, because when I did when I did my pop, I basically took all of these eighteen forty two seven, put them in a deck of pointers, detached them from their siblings and parents and stuff, and then meld them together and put them back in. Yeah. So, uh, so we're like allowed to use a deck. We won't go over memory if we use like a lot of pointers in that deck and stuff. What you or? don't want to do, some people try this. Some people try to walk the <coughs> tree and put every single pointer into the deck, uh, and then they try to do everything else, and that could go over memory. Oh, uh, because we could copy yeah. n items to the deck. Yeah, you would have n point. You would have n extra pointers that you I don't see. need, and that could go over memory. But. This approach is simpler. It's really, really simple. Hey, do you have the room reserved? Uh, so you could be. I just, I'd stay here if I live here. But if you've got it reserved, we'll leave. Okay. So any other questions about this? There was something, um, I saw a few things about, for the um, overloaded assignment operator, it was like something about copy and Swap? Copy swap. Look in lecture five, just search in the lecture five slides for copy hyphen swap. It's in there. We already presented it a couple weeks ago. Just wasn't, you didn't know when you would need it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Or, or it does make sense, but you forget it because you didn't use it right away. It doesn't know, like, it doesn't make sense how we would apply it to what right. we're doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we showed you the copy swap. It's, yeah. the, it's the right way to do an operator equals. No matter what your class is, it's as long as you have dynamic memory, if you must implement an operator equals, the copy dash swap method is the way to do it. Okay, yes. So for pop, we need to go through all of these siblings and like save all the siblings in a single deck. Yeah, yeah. So I would have a deck that contains like pointer to eighteen, pointer to forty two, pointer to seven, then break all their relationships. They have no siblings, they have no parent or previous, then just take two out, meld them, put it at the back. Take two out, meld it, put it at the back. 
just keep going until the deck goes down to size one. And that's multipass. And multipass works really well and it's easy to write. Why would it two sorry, why would it be size one and not size zero? Is this assuming a dummy value? Because I said take two out, meld them, push them at the back. So there's no way to reach zero. I can only reach one. Um, the two pass meld is all or two pass delete is okay also, but it's harder to write. Multipass is really simple to write. Yeah. I think I, the first time I did it, I used the stack, and it was like a little bit trickier because I like. But so, stack so is bad. Okay. If, yeah, if you just use a stack and nothing else, you're doing a one pass because you put everything into it. They're all broken. Then you take two out and meld them. Take another out and meld it. And all you do is you make a big snowball, bigger and bigger and bigger, one at a time. That's the single pass pop, and that's really inefficient. It turns out. You'll end up with a tree that's very, very stick-like. Oh, uh, yeah, mine has so that. Stick -like. <laughs> that's why you okay. want to do. You must do either two pass or multi pass. I saw someone today. They had a one pass pop, and their push test was over on time by a factor of 180. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you got to do the two pass or multi pass pop. And that's where the pairing comes in. It's called a pairing heap. Because when you pop, you pair things together. And that pairing property makes this whole thing efficient. Without the pairing, it falls apart on efficiency. And it's really, really hard to prove why that's important, but it is. Okay. All right, any other questions on pairing? Can you repeat the particle pairing again? The, so when we, when we have a, a pop, so let's say I've got a pointer to 81, which has a pointer to like 18, 23, 42, 7, 58, okay? So when I pop, I've got to get rid of 81. And you can't. So let's say I remember, I've got a pointer to this. P points there, I can delete 81. So I've gotten rid of it, but now I have to turn all of these siblings, and all of these siblings can have nodes below them. I've got to meld all these into one pairing heap. If all I do is take these, take two and meld them with this, meld them with that, meld them with that, that's a single pass pop, and that's inefficient. It'll produce a very, very stick-like tree. So instead, what we do is, if I had, if I had like a deck with pointer to 18, pointer to 23, pointer to 42, pointer to seven, pointer to 58, then once I, once I have those, or while I'm adding them here, I break all their sibling relationships, and I break, however I do, either previous or parent, I break those relationships also. Now, every one of these is effectively the root of a new tree. Because it's the root of a new pairing, <laughs> it's safe to meld. If I don't break these relationships, I can't meld them. So now, what I do is, if I want to do a single pass, I would take two out, put them in a new container. Take two out, put them in a new container. Oh, there's one left over, put it in the new container. And then this one, I take two out, meld it. Take one more out, meld that, and keep taking one out, melding with the result. So, but I still, I pair them up, then I make a bigger deck, a bigger uh, pairing heap. That's two pass. Multi pass is easier to write, multi-pass just says, take two out and meld them, put it at the back. Take two out, meld it, put it at the back. Take two out, this one and the result of that one, take those two out, meld it, put it at the back. Take these two out, meld it, put it at the back. Oh look, I'm at size one, I'm done, I've got a pairing heap again. But the key part is the, is the very first time that you take individuals and pair them together, that's what makes it a pairing heap. And you just return a pointer to the last object. Well, when the deck is size one, yeah. you just return point. Oh, actually, this is pop. When you've got a deck of size one, you just say root equals deck front. Yeah. Oh, so we always pop the front two, and then we always push it to the back. For, for multi-pass. For multi-pass, for multi -pass, yeah. Multi -pass, okay. Or you could, you could do the opposite. You could pair from the back end to the front, would be fine also. The direction doesn't matter. You just have to, you just have to take pairs 
and do all the pairs before you put pairs together. So the only thing you can't do, you can't take off of one end and push at the same end. That would be single pass. So get a really, I did this, and it would I did get a snowball pass. and you'd get a, you'd either a big stick like this or you'd get a big stick like this. And either of those is bad. I got a single pass like that. Yeah, yeah, and then, and all then, the logic is hard to write too. And then every pop, yeah. so then what happens is you end up with like a thousand nodes at the top level and then every pop is O of a thousand instead of O of like log n. Yeah, so the pairing heap overall is, is basically push is effectively O of one and pop is effectively log n. Because it dynamically like repositions itself yeah, compared to like because, the binary. Because terms. meld is effectively O of one. So we say in the, in the spec something like meld is like amortized O of one or something like that or it's log n. <laughs> It's really the, the, the push itself is all of one. It's just how it affects other things. Okay, anything else? Okay, we're done with pairing oh, for a while. No, we're not. Uh, just, uh, so can we write a generic function where we do the two pass or will we just have to like copy it? Well, the only zero. person that needs two pass is pop. <coughs> oh no, the navigation. The traversal. Oh, the traversal. Oh, Professor Darden actually did one that way. He wrote one where he had like a generic traversal function, and he'd give the traversal function like a funk door, and then the funk door, like in the generic traversal, he'd he'd take one out, add the child and sibling, and then call the funk door and do whatever the funk door said to do, and that way he had a generic traversal. And his oh. his was like the shortest pairing heap implementation I've ever seen, but it was kind of tricky. But I don't even, I'm not sure how he saved the lines though because he still had the, oh, because he still had the code, but he only had one copy of the traversal, yeah. yeah. So he had one copy of the traversal function instead of like three copies of it. Okay. All right, let me get some more people done.